Six, I'm Rob, here with my very, very good friend, Monty from Six Gin and Rock and Roll. You guys know this guy. You've been, he's been on the channel many times before. Um, the reason why Monty's back is because he took a little bit of a break on Six Gin and Rock and Roll, and a distillery sent us a kind of gin. Right. A, a, like kind a, of. A, a not so much gin, but kind of like a gin, and then a, a scotch, uh, Lindor's Abbey Distillery. Um, so we decided to do it together. Launch mm-hmm. six gender rock and roll again. Definitely, yeah, yeah, definitely a hiatus. That uh, it's kind of weird to drink cocktails and gin through a Canadian winter. Yeah, the uh, inspiration really isn't there. Uh, but uh, I'm but, back, and uh, yeah, we're here to talk about uh, this really, really good elixir slash yeah. malt. Yeah, you were hitting up some bourbon, some stouts. I was, yes, I was. I was definitely drinking the bourbon and the whiskey this winter. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, I guess we'll start. We'll start with the elixir, mm-hmm. which um, I assumed was kind of like a gin. But mm-hmm. I, I guess you can explain a little bit more about that. Um, Aqua Vitae, uh, as many of you guys would know, there's a YouTube channel, Aqua Vitae, our buddy Roy. Uh, this is also called Aqua Vitae. So mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about it. Definitely. So. Rob first brought it over. We had a taste. We actually were uh, during. It was during a recording session. During a recording session, session, uh, which mm-hmm. uh, I mean, you know, these these things will be popping out <laughs> in the near future. But definitely. we've pretty much finished one song so far. Oh yeah, it's definitely complete. Um, I think I'm pretty proud of it. I, I'm I'm pretty psyched, and uh, the response has been good. A lot of people just trying to make you feel better about whatever. But <laughs> of course, you can yeah. kind of gauge how they're saying it, whether right. they mean it or not. Right. So yeah. it seems like people are liking it, which is nice. I mean, I'm sure I'm very jaded. I've been in the industry for like 16 plus years, so I just don't I don't take compliments at all. <laughs> but anyways, we digress. Well, yeah. Uh, back to the um, the aqua vitae. Uh, like I said, uh, we had it. We popped it during one of our rec- uh, recording sessions, and right away we didn't know what to expect because he was uh, Rob was mentioning that it could have been something of a gin, um, but a- upon further inspection, I noticed it is uh, malt based, uh, and the reason why um, there's a misconception of why it may be a, a gin is because they do use botanicals in the infusion process, uh, so it's almost like. A gin, which is basically, or I mean, I'm going to sound really bad right now by saying this, but gin is usually just a vodka with used with botanicals. Right. Um, but yeah, they kind of did it with a malt-based spirit. They infused the botanicals, uh, some dried fruit, and uh, some spices actually as well. And uh, it drinks very much like an Amato. Yeah, it's got it's got all kinds of stuff going right. on. Like, I mean, you like on the nose, you get like a, a nice, almost like a minty orange. Oh, yeah. There's like all kinds of stuff going on, but like whenever we say those kind of notes for scotch, we mean it in like a subtle way. This is not subtle. The, the no, nose is not subtle. Definitely not. No, it's it's definitely right up front. Yeah. Um, I mean, if, if anybody has had an Amato before, it's a, an Italian botanical beverage. Um, it's very common in uh, our households. Yeah. Know, Italian. Italian households, definitely. Yeah. The, the Campati's and the... Um, yeah, the Montenegro's. The Montenegro's. That's yeah, it. Montenegro's. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, if anybody's uh, heard of like a Cente Erbe, which is something that was uh, developed by monks that was almost medicinal. Yeah. Um, this actually has quite a similar backstory. Yeah, um, so you were saying yeah. that there's um, that this was invented for medicinal reasons. Right, yeah. It was invented as like a, as an elixir. Uh, by the monks at um, Lindor Abbey, uh, and believe it or not, they used to make it for King James the Fourth. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was really cool. And I and uh, during my research, I I've come across that it was used uh, typically to sloweth age, sloweth, sloweth age. <laughs> I love that. Um, and also defeat melancholy, or was it? What did I say again? It was uh, defeated. Defeated. <laughs> is melancholy? it not? I don't know. If <laughs> So it's an antidepressant and an anti-ager, apparently. That's what they're saying. That's pretty cool. I mean, well, it was. Yeah. I mean, I would love to know the science behind that. But too, yeah, absolutely. Um, if there's any truth to it, uh, I will be buying myself a few more of these bottles. Absolutely, um, yeah. I really yeah. enjoy it. Honestly, I think... Mm. I'm, like, So what are you getting on the nose here? Well, right away, like I said, I'm. you're getting that orangey, that orange peel. Yes. Very, like, um, very, very on the nose. Very, very upfront, sorry. Yeah. 
Yeah, and there's like a subtle like clove kind of note. Yes, and through my research again, as Rob is always on the nose, uh, yeah. uh, they do use the clove in this a lot. Oh wow! Actually, okay. Yeah, so you called that out really, really good. So I didn't. I I'm gonna a little bit of like uh, full disclosure here. I didn't do any research on either of these. Um, <laughs> I'm I was really excited when I got them, tasted them, thought they were both great, but. I mean, you know how it is with all these bottles behind me. I just, I, you know, how whiskey in the six is. So uh, <laughs> I didn't, I, I rely on my nose and my palate. And then, and that hopefully gives everybody the picture that they need to know whether or not they want to buy this. Definitely, man. Right. And so yeah. I'm glad you did the research because it I actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's cool. There's, so there's actually clove. I wonder if there's like some sort of citrus peel yeah. oh, in absolutely. the elixir as well. Well, they use um, they do they do use a lot of dried fruits. Okay. Um, and I, I know that it's uh, and I believe orange is one of them. Um, apple maybe. Um, I'm not sure if it was apple. Apple is um, a very common thing to get from like a single malt, especially a younger single malt that's not heavily okay. aged. So right. I wonder if that's just kind of. I wonder if it's in. I mean, they don't, obviously don't disclose the full recipe, uh, but I do know they mention uh, dried fruit, spices, botanicals. It's something that you can really drink on its own. Yeah, and believe it or not, um, I mean, it does. It does say that it, you can use it as a base spirit for any great cocktail. They really encourage people to to be creative with it and bring out their inner mixologist, as I was reading. Yeah. But um, I mean, honestly, like Rob and I have been drinking this just straight up. Yeah, and it's absolutely fantastic. It's I, something I really love. Did it say if there's added sugar in this? Because it it's sweet. It is it's got, like it's really honestly. It's yes. like so easy to drink on its own that I almost hope that there's not added sugar because it's like it's just so good. I know. Own, I, I you know what? Like like again, it doesn't. It, it didn't mention anything about added sugar, but I would imagine the sweetness comes from that the dried fruit part. Yeah, um, and, I mean, and yeah. like you know, natural. Like so we can compare it to the scotch because we do right. have the scotch sitting yeah, right beside definitely. it. Yeah, uh, definitely. We don't know much outside of the fact that this is at least three years old. It doesn't have an age statement. Um, for those of you that are looking to get it, I think this is just their standard release. Uh, I know that they have some single casks that are like ridiculously dark and super young as well, like five years old and just black liquid, like oh, wow. super dark scotch. Wow. So um, this is not one of them. This is just an ex-bourbon barrel and 46%. Um, oh, sorry. There is, there is sherry and wine barrique as well. Cast type is bourbon, sherry, wine barrique. So, oh, okay. um, but I mean, you wouldn't be able to tell that based on the color. It's very. It's a lot lighter than you you think, considering they're using sherry. Cast yeah, and stuff sherry there, right? and wine. I'm, I'm I'm actually pretty surprised. Yeah, yeah. Let's dive in here. Uh, the nose actually would. Now that I read wine barrique, I do pick up some like a lighter like white wine, like maybe a, a fortified white wine, like a Sauternes or something like that. Maybe even like a Madeira. I wonder what that that other barrel is. So got a really really nice uh, really nice smell to it. Yeah, so 46%. Mm. Smells beautiful. I, I, oh, it's gorgeous, yeah. You can tell there's a little bit more going on on the nose than just uh, bourbon barrels. But definitely some vanillas. Like a, I kind of get like a green grape kind of uh, aroma. Like you cut open a green grape. Oh, that wow. Like, that's that's kind of what I'm getting. Definitely. You mean like... Like now the, that the, maybe the fresh fruit definitely yeah like now that like I'm, I'm picturing that in my mind i mean another thing that's common in italian households is fresh green grapes on yeah. sunday after lunch absolutely definitely getting that yeah i'm gonna give this one a sip yeah nice viscosity to it not overly uh thick on the palate by any means it's got a nice finish um a little bit of I want to say almost like a coffee note on the back end, which is not expected. Definitely, like yeah, I, I, I can. It, it's almost that bitterness. There's like a, a tiny little bit, bit of that bitterness at the end. Mm -hmm. Somewhat similar to like a coffee. Yeah. Up front, like when you wave through like the oak influence, you're getting maybe a little bit of apple, a little bit of vanilla. Vanilla, I can totally get absolutely. I would say more vanilla than like a, like a caramel, right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. If this is more, so I don't 
yeah, I'm not getting too much caramel. I'm getting more like the vanilla side, right. a little bit of like orchard fruit kind of notes, but like very subtle. Mm. See, this is a great thing about having someone like Rob. <laughs> it's like, I don't know where he gets these flavors from. When we first started recording our videos, or I started recording for you, it was a, one of the first times that I, I guess I, I saw you in action and I really got this, and, and he's pulling these flavors out of the air. <laughs> like, and these notes, and I'm just like, Wow, when you're good at something, you really are good at something. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that, it. dude. Yeah, that's uh, I wow. Mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here going, I, I think, I, I mean, <laughs> man, how do I compete with this? So, so, so when when Steve was recording the videos, um, he'd be back there with whatever I was drinking. So we yeah, would, we would both have exactly. a glass of what, and you know, like you were just getting into whiskey for the most, like you love bourbon, but you're yes. just getting more into scotch at the time. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Right? It so, really opened my eyes to scotch yeah. and my, my taste buds. Yeah, so, so it was it was cool to have that experience and then like definitely. being looking at the camera, but also see the reaction when I would get a note and then you're like, oh yeah, that's there. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's, cool. yeah. it's, it's yeah. also the power of suggestion. We talk about it a lot on the channel. Like, of course, yeah. You know, I taste chocolate, you're gonna start to look for chocolate and you'll, you'll right. find it, right? Right, I mean, yeah, it's, it, it is the power of suggestion, but I mean, uh, if, if you can get as close as you possibly can, then it's, you know, I mean, you're not, it's not like you're pulling things out of nowhere, you know what I mean? Yeah. You, are, you are getting, with, with, with whatever's influencing your right. uh, senses, right? Yeah, and, and I mean, to, to a degree, right? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, there's gonna be times where, you know, I'll, I'll pull out a note and people are like, I don't get that at all. And that's, it's gonna happen. Totally, it's totally. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. It, yeah. it depends what I ate that day. It depends on how many yes. coffees I had. It depends on, like, what I was drinking. You know, I, I had a pineapple bubbly before we started. Right, yeah. So, like, that yeah. could be influencing my, oh my, my God, palate yeah. as well, right? It's true, so, that's true. But um, what I do know is I really enjoy this, especially as an entry Very level uh, scotch coming into the, like, I'm, I'm pretty excited because I feel like out of all the regions of Scotland, Lowlands seems to be lacking distilleries at the moment. Or, or, or maybe I just, I'm not hearing enough about the Lowlands. So it, it's cool that uh, Lindor is is in Lowlands. So we're going to start to see, you know, if if um, terroir is a real thing. Oh, yes. You then, mentioned this before. Yes. The terroir. Yes. Then, hey, yeah. then, then I want to know more about Lindor uh, because... Is. You know, I don't know enough about Lowlands. I know that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there's a couple. Uh, Akintoshin is one, I believe. Mm -hmm. And, and Glengoyne is pretty close to the Lowlands. But, um, yeah, it's, it's it, you need more to be able to recognize them. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, it's true. Like, even when I'm drinking, like, I'm, I'm drinking my gins, um, I notice, like, back to the power of suggestion and the power of, like, just, you know, something that influenced your senses. I've noticed that even myself, when I'm drinking a gin, I try to compare it... Um, almost to something that's non-alcoholic, like a right. beverage that would be something that, like I think I even compared one gin to almost like a Gatorade. Mm. And, and and that was kind of weird. I mean, I, it seems weird, but you kind of have to understand something. I think it was Empress 1908. Okay. That blue gin. Yeah, yeah. And it, maybe it was the power of suggestion that it was blue, it was giving me Gatorade could notes. Been. Could be yeah. that too, right? But I mean, there was also that really, really good um, uh, sweetness to it. Right. And, and uh, but at the same time, I like to do stuff like that where it kind of like, so people that haven't tried it yet. And relate to it. Can kind of relate to it and kind of say like, oh, I know what Gatorade tastes like. Yeah. So maybe, okay, maybe this is something for me. You know what I mean? So that was kind of my strategy when it comes to like picking out flavor notes and flavor profiles. Yeah. It's almost like bringing it down for the, like in layman's terms, I guess you could say. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? For someone Absolutely. who isn't really like an avid gin drinker, somebody who wants to get into gin. Yeah. That's the perfect way to do it, I think. Right. Like, rela relating to things that are very relatable. Like right. Like coffee yeah. and like exactly. Gatorade and chocolate and, you know. Well, that's the, that's the best part of it, especially when you're describing your whiskeys and bourbons and, and scotches and whatnot. It's just p picking out those flavors because a lot of people say, like you said, really like chocolate. It's like, right. look, this is really a really chocolatey whiskey. And like, yeah. well, maybe it's for me. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. So exactly. That's, that's, that's great. That's yeah. cool. Very yeah. cool. Um, okay, so I will I will give this this uh, scotch a mark in just mm -hmm. a sec. Mm -hmm. Any final notes on, on this? Like, speaking to the gin drinker right now. Yes. Um, would, like, what would you compare, like, what would you compare this to in the gin world, if it's Ooh, even comparable? Uh, yeah, I mean, let me hop in here. I just have the scotch on my taste buds right now. So while you're doing that, on the back of the bottle, it says to serve uh, over ice with ginger ale and a slice of orange. Mm -hmm. Delicious. And, and that's that cocktail sounds delicious. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and you can kind of get those notes on the nose mm -hmm. of this of this elixir as well. Yes, and, and they do use a ginger. 
Okay, there you go. So yeah, absolutely. And I think that's why they yeah. really want to bring those notes enhance out it. and enhance those notes. Yeah. So the orange, the ginger, they really want to bring those to the forefront. You know what I mean? So absolutely, yeah, definitely. But um, if I had to compare this to a gin, it would it would definitely be a gin that has that is, that is a little bit more earthy. Okay. Um, something that's a little bit more earthy, a little bit more uh, botanically. Right. That's a word. So. Um, the one, the other one that pop, comes to mind is is a, I think it's called botanical or something like that. It's a, it's a scotch. I think it's from Brooklady. Oh yes, yes, it's the um, oh my god oh my goodness the name escapes me from me. It's 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 from it's a Brooklady gin. Yeah. Um, and what they actually they actually did an aged gin. It was a limited release. Okay. Uh, that was a few years ago. They had a whole festival about it. Oh wow. Uh, they I think it was like maybe two or four hundred bottles or something like that. I can't remember. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but the, the Brooklady gin that uh, you're talking about is, I believe, uh, oh no, that's Glendalough. Glendalough is another one. Okay, that's that's, that's Irish. Irish. That's and, Irish. And you know what? And 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 now that I think of the Glendalough, I did a, a a review on that. You can see on my channel as well. This definitely would kind of be within that range. Okay. Uh, Glendalough has that um, that really uh, earthy. like earthy kind of botanically kind of flavor. Um, and the one, I guess, the one that you would be thinking of is the um, the, uh, the botanist. The botanist. That's the what botanist. I mean. I yes, the I know the name escaped me for a second, but yes, the yes. botanist. I wouldn't really. I would compare this more to say the Glendala, right. only because it has a little bit more of the same pro flavor profile. Okay. Uh, but the botanist uh, has almost like a more of a, um, a spicier kind of. Okay taste to it I guess you can say you know what I mean yeah um, cool. but there's there is aged gins that you can get like right. oak aged and whatnot um, they would probably fall in the same category as something like this as far as um, almost like an aged botanical elixir right um, but if I really had to con uh, compare it I would I would definitely be either the Glendala is that my pronouncing it properly? Yeah, I think you're pretty close. Pretty I mean, close, I, yeah. That's as Glendalog. good as I'm going to do. <laughs> or whatever, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Glendalog, yeah. Yeah, Glendalog, Glendalog. Anyway, yeah, they like to not pronounce a lot of letters. <laughs> right, I noticed that. Yeah, you're right, actually. Yeah, so maybe it is Glendalog. I don't know. But uh, yeah, that one definitely for sure. Um, and the botanist around that, in that same kind of category. Uh, but I, I, again, I'm going to bring it back to the Amato. Okay. Yeah. I'm really going to push that. It's almost like uh, an herbal kind of drink, like an elixir, something yet. I, I would drink this like after any big meal. Okay. Um, like a digestivo. It, it, right. It would be like definitely a digestivo. Maybe even an aperitivo. I always mispronounce mm. that word. An aperitivo. It's light enough to be an aperitivo. Yes. And it, it, the orange and stuff like that would open up your palate a little bit too. So absolutely, yeah. So I can see that too. before dinner, after dinner. Yeah, yeah. There These you are go. really good, guys. Both um, of them. You know what? I'm I'm very impressed with this. I mm -hmm. think, to be honest with you, I probably buy this one mm -hmm. um, before I replace this one. And the only reason being is because I don't have anything like this. Neither do I. Right? Like mm -hmm. it's cool to have, like have something a little bit different, you know, I, I honestly don't think that they add sugar to this. I think they're just, uh, no. they're serving it the way they would serve, mm -hmm. you know, um, a scotch, but just with botanicals in it to make it a little bit more of an elixir. But mm -hmm. having something like this on your bar gives you a little bit more diversity. Um, this is still very good. I'm going to give this one 85. I think it's good. Um, especially that they're doing all the things that I like about scotch and, and it's a brand new distillery, uh, you know, price range is is fair i think mm -hmm. uh these are both pretty good though i, I really like this i honestly I, I i have to say the same for for the both of them um now rob knows i'm not really a peated whiskey kind of guy yeah so this definitely falls within my uh palette uh, as far as scotches go yeah um but i would definitely i would definitely buy like keep this on the bar only because like i said it's it's something comparable to an amato it's something that i can you can mix it with cocktails to really like be different um Another thing I, I, I researched and found out that it has it's won quite a bit of awards. Oh wow! And uh, I can, I, you yeah. know what? It doesn't. I, I said wow, but it actually doesn't surprise yeah, me. Right, I it's know. Right? Really good. It, it's it's really good, and and they found that uh, it, that a lot of people that have reviewed this and at the launch parties and whatnot noticed that it works well with like cocktails. It's amazing. I mean, you can sip it straight, hundred percent, and I will continue to. Yeah. 
but to, to mix it into certain cocktails to kind of throw somebody off, like somebody who's like an avid cocktail drinker, mm -hmm. you make them a drink with this and they would be like, okay, what's in this drink right now? It's, it's crazy. Good, yeah, absolutely. Like yeah. I, I would almost say that this could be all you need to do is add a little maybe sweetness and ice to, to a like mimic an old fashioned almost. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah right? absolutely. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. An old fashioned would be, you know, a little bit of bitters, a little bit of whiskey of your choosing and then... And then, um, you know, a slice of orange. You can do a slice of orange or even uh, you can crush up uh, our sugar cube to give sugar it Sugar cube, I usually do a little bit of maple syrup. You can do maple syrup, yeah, yeah right? Maybe, yeah. Very Canadian. Maybe. Yeah, very Canadian. <laughs> uh, but that you would need like a little bit of maple syrup, mm -hmm. ice, orange peel, done. Done. Yeah, and right? I mean, you could you could burn some some wood in the glass to make it even smoky. Monty gets fancy with his cocktail. We know this. Yeah, we know this. Guy, you know? Check out the <laughs> check out the six gen rock and roll. Uh, Monty, thank you so much for doing this with me. Thanks. Right? Thank you very much for having me. Um, we're gonna try to do more of these. Yes, please. Um, and mm -hmm. we're also we we haven't decided exactly how we're gonna launch our our music. Uh, but that's yes. that's in the works and we're gonna figure that out absolutely you guys will definitely get a taste of a little bit of it hopefully maybe, maybe we'll put it in this episode maybe we'll put it in this episode no it is like, it's in this episode you can hear it yeah all right yeah okay oh yeah yeah that's right i can hear <laughs> yeah, it yeah i can hear it too yeah you yeah. guys can hear it um when the credits roll you'll hear it a little bit better yeah hopefully. we'll make it louder then definitely follow six gen and rock and roll you guys know where to catch me on instagram twitter facebook uh support this channel on patreon if you like and uh thanks for tuning in yeah, keep it cranked. Keep it cranked. The kingdom of God is within man, not one man, nor a group of men, but in all men, in you, you the people have the power. The power to create machines, the power to create happiness. You the people have the power to make this life free and beautiful. Competition is unavoidable. Be yourself, don't care what others do. What others do. Son, they'll try to change you Knock you down, but you gotta soldier through Just soldier through Be better than you were yesterday Be better a little more every day So I want to stop you Bear down, baby girl You'll make it through I know you'll break right through In this life They mean to tame you Snap the chains Do what you wanna do The rising star in you Be better Than you were There's nothing you know